Sup, what's new? Serious time here with another video. This time, I'm gonna be playing a third-person platformer action sort of game. One that actually I played a couple times as a kid, though I never beat it, and a port came out on PC some time ago, so I figured, hey, why not give it a go, right? So this is Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. I'm gonna be quiet here just so the cutscene can play out. Hope y'all enjoy. Don't be afraid, Ty. I am Nandu Gili, the Bunyip Elder. G'day, mate! It's time you knew the truth. Years ago, a great battle was fought over the fate of five mystic talismans. Brave few who challenged Boss Cass were trapped in the dreaming. Mom? Dad? Word grows that Boss Cass is seeking out the talismans again. He must be stopped at all costs. It's up to you to find the talismans before he does. It's up to me to save my family. Oi, Ty! Are you okay? Murray? Oh, am I glad to see you. Oh, you're never gonna believe what just happened. I was playing in the forest when the ground suddenly... And that's when you showed up. Root! Sounds like you've got a fair dinkum adventure ahead of you, mate. Not that I'm into that sort of thing. I'd much rather be at home watching the footy. But I tell you what, you do the adventuring and I'll help you out where I can. Welcome to Rainbow Cliffs, mate. 
By the way, whenever you see one of these signs, I won't be far away. I've heard that if you press the action button, you can talk to me, whatever that means. OK, now let's get down to brass tacks. If you're going to be out adventuring, then you'll need another boomerang. And I know just the place to find one. <laughs> Head down to Bly Bly Station. I'll meet you there. So the opening to this game I thought was very Saturday morning cartoon-like, almost. Which caught my eye, although outwardly there doesn't seem to be too big a plot to this game. Really, it felt like they just wanted to make a game with some decent environments that they could play around in. Like, you know, it seems like it's a little more G'day, chill. Julius. Now, if I just reroute these wires to... I said good day, mate. I is death. Oh, goodness graces me. Oh, I didn't see you there. I was just making some last-minute adjustments. Well, 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 you must be Ty. G'day. So, you old coot, <laughs> what's this contraption do? <laughs> this contraption is the key to finding the talismans. Why is this so? It's quite simple, really. It uses an oscillatory microfeeder to scan for trace energy signals that match the unique power matrix of the talismans. Huh? Mm, like a big nose that sniffs them out. Oh. Ah. <laughs> and thunder eggs are the key to powering the machine. Ah, yes, a collectible. Thunder eggs? Oh, they're as rare as hen's teeth, mate. I feel like those aren't rare. Couldn't you just use batteries? <sighs> if only it was that easy. You see, this machine doesn't just find where the talismans are, it actually teleports them here. Struck me lucky. And that, my friends, requires a great deal of energy. So, uh, how is Ty here gonna find all these thunder eggs? Eh, hey, I was just wondering that myself. A reasonable question. I've created these portals to lead Ty to areas rich with them. Of course, they won't just be lying all over the place. Just our luck. A lot of them will have already been found. The trick will be convincing the locals to part with their prized possessions. But I'm afraid I can't help you with that. If you're as resourceful as they say, Ty, I'm sure you'll think of something. Righto, Ty. There's no point in mucking about. You've got to find a second boomerang. I'll see you in two up. Okay, so, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's like... The plot doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense immediately with the fact that... Well, how does how is that guy already making a machine this when they just figured this out? The lot. Gum trees, wallabies, and even a koala. <laughs> There's plenty to do here, so let's get a move on. However, even if the plot's not that great, it is a pretty enjoyable game to play, I think. I have fun every time I play it. I have never been particularly frustrated at this game. Listen, mate, I solved your problem. I found you a second boomerang. This. That's great. Where is it? See that tree over there? Yeah. Well, it's not there. When you tell your dog you have a tree, right. but you don't. Well, where is it? It's on top of Frill Neck Peak. Oh, great. Oh, don't worry. You'll just have to jump, run, rang, and bite your way there while avoiding Boss Cass's henchmen. Look, mate, life wasn't meant to be easy. So at first I was having trouble getting a hang of the PC sort of jumping mechanics. I was considering playing this with a controller, actually, just... I feel like it's more so meant Yeti, to be played Butler, like that. Bonza! I got one! Yeah, yeah, yeah. One down, 71 to go. <laughs> Come on, let's get a move on. <laughs> I got a power cell. I mean, I got a thunder egg. This isn't Jack Daxter. I reckon those dunnies are a complete waste of spikes. <laughs> 
Only last week I used one, walked two blocks, was clobbered by a frill, and then woke up back on the dunny. Which was the best place to be, given the surprise I got. Julius reckons it's got something to do with the space-time conundrum. But if you ask me, I think it's a load of bull dust. So you're saying that if I have an accident, I'll end up back at one of these? Something like that. Yeah, so that's the, the checkpoints in this game. They are, uh, the toilets. Because this game is classy like that. Truth time! You've got Truth. a fair set of choppers on you. I reckon you could put them to good use <laughs> by pressing the bite button. <laughs> Get it? It's choppers. Bite button. <laughs> Never mind, Ty. Move on. Have a go at those crates. You know, I do kind of like how the the bird guy there says things that aren't actually like part of his dialogue that comes up at the bottom of the screen. You can see, so you can tell when he's being a little cheeky. Now, I was speaking to a bloke down the local water and hole, and he reckons you can use your rings to take care of enemies and smash things. You ripper! He said something now, wait a minute, he said something about pressing the throw button to use them. Now, one thing that I'm not too big a fan of, in terms of the actual gameplay, so far, is the combat. Like, you saw, you just throw one, you, you left-click those guys, and they die. That's it. I'm sure there's gonna be harder enemies. Like, I know there's the kangaroos that show up in this level, too, and they take two hits. Oh, it's a scout no, fly. Not more cages. Struth! What happened here? Boss Cass did this. He's caged all your bilby mates and hidden them across the land. Oh, yeah? Well, big mistake. No one messes with my mates. Now, there's a thunder egg in each area if you free them. No worries. Unless you're Boss Cass. Yeah, basically the same concept as, a uh, say... Pre no, it's not Precursor Orb, sorry. To say... You could say they're similar to Scout Flies from Jack and Daxter, where if you collect all of them, you get a power cell. You youngins, have it easy these days. If you want to get a better look at your Surratt, and I also realize the game, the camera by default, by doesn't actually day, have this key map that this cutscene talks world. about, which is why I'm talking over it. Just because it doesn't have it mapped out, you have to set it yourself for some reason. That feel when you find a collectible that hasn't been explained yet. Nah, I know what those do though. I realize also I miss one, but when I walk back to get the race... I don't know if it's true, but I heard about this bloke who found 300 opals, then took them to Julius's opal machine. Anyway, something weird happened, and he ended up with a thunder egg! <laughs> right, eh? So, you're seeing very much the collectathon nature of this game. And, you know, I should note, this game, I might start recording it in max settings. I'm not for this video for the fact that, for some reason, it looked laggy when I was playing it, but then when I actually went and watched the footage, the footage recorded better than it played, which was really weird. I don't know how that's possible, but that's what happened. And so the footage looks the same frame rate as this, so I might start recording in that then. I just hope that doesn't... I don't know, maybe my computer was acting up because it did update after, but... So, it's no secret to the people that know me that my favorite game series is Jack and Dax. It is one of them third-person action platformers, and it's my favorite genre. And honestly, I'm pretty sad that this genre is kind of dead nowadays. 
Which also, that makes me happy for something like, say, Psychonauts 2. Which is another third-person sort of game like that. Which I never played as a kid, actually. I never played Psychonauts. But you bet I'm gonna. My plan is that after I finish doing a playthrough of the first tie game, I'm probably gonna do Ukulele. Then, even though I hate myself for saying it, I'm gonna do Skylar and Flux. And then after that, I'm probably gonna do Psychonauts. And who knows, if I get a capture card, or it emulates well enough, I would get the Jack games for you guys. I don't know how many scout flies there are in each level. Hmm. Yes. Yes. This just might do. Get I, Julius? Oh, hello, Ty. You, you know this golden cog just might be perfect for my latest invention. The cogulaceous boomerangerous extrapolator. Right. What's that? Why, it's a machine that creates experimental techno rangs. I need golden cogs to build a new one. Fifteen, to be exact. And if you find enough, bring them to my lab in Rainbow Cliffs, and I'll build you a new boomerang. You're on, mate! So... I... I don't recall ever actually getting too far with the... Rangs, because again, I never beat this game as a kid. So I don't think I ever ended up getting an upgrade past the first one he gives you. And who knows, maybe getting the rangs will actually kind of help out my combat issue where I find it not very interesting. Because see, like, that's, that's better than the frills there, but the kangaroos aren't much more of a challenge whatsoever. It's really just press your buttons, the end. I suppose you could boil down any fight to that in gaming, but... I don't think you can reach up there from here. I didn't find a way to get up there, actually. Not even when I went back around and glided, when you get your second boomerang. Also not sure why he wouldn't get up here. Cause it t oh gosh, okay, we're good. It totally looks like he should be able to just latch onto that, but he's not. You know, I gotta say, while I do like how this sounds, like most of the sounds in this game, they're pretty different. Julius told me to tell you this, but I have no idea what it means. Apparently, according to Julius, you can lock your camera on to enemies at any time by pressing and holding the lock on button. So, I, I like how this game sounds different. Like, you can tell this isn't copying another game's soundtrack in the way that the game sounds necessarily. I, I, I love the, the Australian vibe to it so much. Do I go the wrong way here? Oh, I see what I did. Good. Very good. I like how it sounds different, but in a way, even though it's different, it's not super unique somehow. It's different, but actually it's not that different. And I've never played the sequels to this game. I'm gonna eventually. But, please tell me I get that cog. Okay, good. I, I do kind of like how there's a variety of objects. I'm just trying to relate this to my 
time playing other games on the PS2, because that's where I first saw this this era and this type of game. It reminds me a little of Sly Cooper. Well, I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see it with my own eyes. <laughs> you actually found the second boomerang. Well, there's no time to sit around and feel all pleased with yourself. You're gonna have to put that new ring to use. You see, I had a thunder egg I was gonna give you, but a bunch of frills stole it. You'll have to take them all on to get it back. So I was saying it, it reminds me a little of Sly Cooper for the fact that it's like, you don't have a direct sort of like Daxter or Clank sort of character. And instead, you also have all these like power-ups and stuff like that magnet, for example, that you saw. And with the magnet, I'm pretty sure there's a similar object in Sly Cooper. However, th the gameplay of this, while it does have aspects like that, it plays much more similarly to, say, Banjo-Kazooie, or even, even the first Jack game a little bit. That's the vibes I get from it. You know, since recording this, I beat the second level and got the ability to swim. I should kind of go back here and check out some of those things. I don't know if I just missed it or if there actually is 300 opals in well, this level. It looks like today wasn't a complete waste of time. <laughs> you seem to have learned a thing or two. Oh, yeah, you're too right. Uh, you know, there's one other thing I could show you, but uh, I don't know if you're ready for it yet. Yeah? Well, what's that? Well, a mate of mine who knows a mate who knows a mate who knows another mate says you can use two boomerangs to glide long distances. How? Yes, this it's is simple, totally really. logical. <laughs> you jump, then press and hold jump again to start gliding. Right. Is that safe? Safe as ours is, mate. I love See that thing. See if you can glide across this gap to reach that thunder egg. Come on, man, it's not dangerous, I swear. Hold your entire body weight on two boomerangs. See, it works. I'm gonna do that in real life. Me mate's mate, 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 was telling the truth after all. <laughs> Just as well I didn't call for an ambulance. <laughs> well, lad, you made it through with flying colors. And as a little extra bonus, a stopwatch will appear near the start. Okay. What's that for? The racetrack. You can race the clock to win another Thunder Egg. Right. I'll give that a go later. <laughs> well, that's enough gas bagging from me. Let's head back to the Bly Bly station. I'm gonna... Ugh, I'm gonna cut to the race in a second here, just because I manually trekked all the way back for some reason. <laughs> And yeah, here we go. So let the race begin. Welcome to the track. Race to the finish as fast as you can, mate. The checkpoints will lead the way. But miss one and the race is over. <laughs> Good luck. Ring races give me PTSD of the Jack 3 Leaper Lizard race. Like, I feel a twinge of anxiety anytime I see a ring race. Because that Jack 3 race was so, so hard to do that on that annoying Leaper. But this, this was, this is freaking easy. I'm okay with this. I mean, just seeing the rings makes the, the hairs on my arm stand up a little, but... That was a ripper of a race, Ty. You're faster than a long-legged emu with a case of the belly aches. <laughs> case of the belly aches. I reckon you've earned this. Oh, you beauty! 
So we need those to save the world, and this guy's just carrying them around, not giving them to me unless I race? Excuse me? How rude. This is again what I mean when I say the plot doesn't make sense in this game. Anyway. Um. I guess this is... I'll talk over this bit here. Just tell you guys what's new with, with the game. I mean, sorry, not with the game, with the channel. So as you've noticed, I have a bit of an upload schedule going. I'm always experimenting with it. At first, it was just, we'll have a podcast on Fridays, and I'll upload videos whenever I feel like it. And then it changed, hey, I'll upload videos on Wednesdays, podcast Friday. And then, yeah, this is where I get the one that I missed, where I cry. So, I just attempt to do Wednesdays and Fridays, and I was like, hey, what if I did Monday, Wednesday, and then Friday podcast? But then, I still had so many videos that I realized they weren't going to come out for almost three weeks. So, I cut it down to Saturday, Monday, Wednesday. Those are video games. Then Friday is the podcast. So that's pretty cool. And in terms of stuff you're going to see next, I recorded a lot of Paladins with with uh, Sky. You know, we got to rep that Delta Sword, our gaming clan. So I played some games with him, some paladins. You're of course gonna see Realm, that's a staple on this channel. But then as well, my brother is recording his first series with his friends. Actually, they're gonna borrow my microphone when I'm done here. And with this game that they're gonna be doing, they're gonna do Smash Ultimate players play Smash Bros. 64. And they're, he's gonna do a series with him and some of his, his buddies where they're just playing Smash, like the different older versions. Now, his favorite genre is fighting games. Me, myself, that's one of my least favorite genres, so you're never going to see me play that with him, because I get immensely frustrated really quickly when it comes to that sort of thing. But, it'll... I'm more than happy to watch people play, in fact, I enjoy watching people play fighting games to see how they stomp each other. I'm just really not a fan of, of, of being stomped by people, and also stomping people in fighting games. I just find fighting games rub me the wrong way, really. That's why I, this is my favorite genre, but I'm really excited that he's gonna have his own series, finally. Oh, I found it! Oh, I found it! Let me see that. At last, a mystic talisman. It's time to move out. We got four more talismans to find. You there, fetch my bags! <laughs> Soon, unimaginable power will be mine. 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 That voice actor is really over the top, and I love it. Anyway, this is where this game's gonna end, so... Hope y'all enjoyed! Catch y'all on the flip side!